Hi, my name is Nikita Serov. Right now I'm a first year master student of Itmoy University in St. Petersburg, Russia, studying molecular biology. In this video, I hope will give you insight into how exactly proteins can form hydrogen bonds. Here are my contacts, by the way. Feel free to text me anytime if you have some questions or if you have an idea of what issue I can address next time. Also text me. Let's begin, I guess. First of all, in order to figure out how they are doing it, we need to understand the chemical properties of each individual amino acid. Let's take a look at this table. It's a classic one, I guess you've already dealt with it, but I think it's not the best way to depict it. Uh, also you can see a peptide bond, classic peptide bond. Um, I have modified it a bit, so it's something like that. First of all, I think it's, uh, it's very important to depict amino acids in the context of peptide bonds, right here, because on the previous picture there are some atoms you don't have in a real protein. I, I've grouped all amino acids in the accordance with the capability of donating or accepting the hydrogen bond. All of the amino acids on the left uh, they have the capability of accepting hydrogen bond. All of the amino acids on the right have the capability of donating hydrogen bond. Amino acids in the center can do both. And the amino acids on the top can do none of this uh, with their nonpolar radicals right here and here and here and so on. Also, there you go, uh, a correct picture correct figure of a peptide bond and as you can imagine all of the amino acids actually can both donate and accept the hydrogen bond with the atoms in the peptide bonds. I've depicted the something chemists call conjugation. It's a conjugation. Well, what's happening here is that nitrogen atom kind of donates its electron pair to that carbon nitrogen bond followed by migration of electron pair of that bond to the oxygen atom. It's an intermediate. It's kind of a reality. And that is the second possible form we less used to, but it's also make a contribution to the chemical properties of amino acids in the protein context. Also, I need to notice uh, that these are only partial charges because that nitrogen was neutral, zero charge, and it has given its negatively charged electrons to the carbon nitrogen bond, but not completely. That's what chemists call distribution of electron density. Electrons are the waves as the parts of the, of the atom not real particles that could be given or taken. That kind of shifting of the electron density makes the oxygen, makes that oxygen uh, partially negatively charged. And it also makes that nitrogen partially positively charged so the former can accept hydrogen bond stronger because it easier gives its electron pair strong nucleophile and the latter can donate its stronger because of the acidity of that atom becoming higher so the partial positive charge on that hydrogen also high. We learned that in order to donate hydrogen bond you need to have an electronegative atom directly connected with a proton. Why electronegative? because it kind of takes the electron density from the hydrogen and it becomes more positively charged. In order to accept hydrogen bond, you need an atom capable of giving its electron pair and it also must be electronegative. Otherwise, it will just take that proton from the hydrogen bond donor and there will be no hydrogen bonding at all. Now let's see what makes amino acids acceptors of the hydrogen bond. As you can see, it's always a lone pair. 
electron pair not shared with another atom. But there are some questionable examples, like cysteine. Sulfur is not so electronegative, like nitrogen and oxygen, but in some cases, at least, it is possible, because all of this strongly depends on the situation or on the mutual arrangement of amino acids in a particular protein. Also, electron pairs in the arginine, in the arginine and histidine are involved in the conjugation, so it makes them less strong as the nucleophiles. Basically, they give their electron pairs less freely, but, is, but it is also possible. Of course, it also depends on pH, and you need to take the possible protonation sites into account. Let's have a look at the hydrogen bond donors. It's very simple and easy to recognize now, so it needs no additional explanation, I guess. Only electronegative atom, like oxygen, nitrogen and sulfur, having a covalent bonding with the hydrogen. Also, it's quite important to say some about the amide moieties in the asparagine and glutamine. Here it is. It's very similar to the peptide bond, that's why it's uh, nitrogen not so, not so great in the accepting of hydrogen bonds. Again, first structure, intermediate and second structure. Finally, I jotted down some possible examples for you to realize how many possibilities lay there. I just want to notice two things here. One is some amino acids can form intermolecular hydrogen bonds as well. And the second one is whether some hydrogen bonding is taking place or not. It is possible to find out with the help of an X-ray crystallography, giving us the information about how each particular atom in the protein is located in the three dimensions. I hope you enjoyed the video. Presentation will be in the description. Good luck!